somewhere. Oh, no, not quite. <laughs> so we're off to Haynes Motor Museum today. Going to Drive Tribe Car Show. Ooh, nice. That's a pro. I mean, that's what I, that's what I think. What would they have done? Obviously, if the weather was like yesterday. Yeah. I think so. That's lunch, right? What what would they have done? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. That's as far as I can zoom out as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I drove on the track. Hello. Morning. Morning. Some bird has defecated over my car. That's shit, isn't it? It is. It physically and literally is. For once, it doesn't take the piss. No. Ah, this is Sunbeam Alpine. So we have arrived, and for you people at home that don't know about Adam C. Point Chaser, this is a four door original Japanese turbo. We're going to see that so much today. What he gets it, he has done the wheels, he's done a very, very lovely Adam C. Sunstrap. Adam B. How was it being chewing your ears? That's my issue. It was great. I can't do that. Right, on a serious note, I want to look at this Manda. Hey, I mean, that to me is already my highlight of the show. You just don't see it. And they're cool as anyone. <laughs> Well, I used to have a mini 
tape yeah, this from this go. side. <laughs> so, <laughs> see, that's why I keep on living at as my next car. That's yeah. a family issue. That's a nice car. F2 Civic. It's still the cheapest. <laughs> but you still get. Bang for buck, I think you get a lot of money. Adam C. Filming. Adam C. Filming is right. <laughs> What was that? Oh, it's right by you. He's going to have a field day. Oh, yeah, that's a cool car. No, no, the guy died, and then I, so I've got lots of cars, I've got over 100 cars, so I don't know if weird and one, but I've got a farm right now. Yeah. Yeah. Bulletproof car was really cool. He never ran, he was going to some dinner, and he was going to bulletproof car. So he escaped the Iranian Revolution, so I think that's how I get his car back in that car. If, if I'm going to carry on getting on, I'll get to the side of the car to That is clean. You too! I don't see that when we come past. I was here. That is super clean. Wow. Why can't I still design cars like this? I know. Like that shape. Everything about the, the arches. <laughs> What's a couple doing? Um, you can see when they've cut the stand, they've cut the paint down to polish it, and they've gone. No, we've got Where? 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 I saw that too. I don't think it's a roll. I just have this weird feeling. Oh, look at the back side of that. That needs to be like the same thing. That's gorgeous. Why are you looking at the uh, type R? Drop try, thanks for coming. Thank you. Come chat. Bang for buck for performance. We well, used to be able to get them for like two grand, so bang for buck. The amount of fun you can have in one. Definitely. Well, it's weird, because everyone always gets a type of 10 but it's, well, when you drive, it's, it's the rawness of it. That's, that's the it's a 6.3, but it's 6.2, apparently. Be driving on because they weigh nothing, yeah. Like, flat four, nice, <laughs> nice and easy to do a belt change, yeah. You can literally do it while it's running. Like, I've so, done one because it would be literally it's running in the sun. You turn it over with the uh, screwdriver, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I think that's got a lot of. Looks at the moment. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 You can look how ridiculous like that. Yeah. <laughs> I love my dishes. Good. I like the embossed as well, they're not just normal like they've, they've got good detail on them, like the old. Yeah. 
Yeah, of course it's a real value. Well, of course, we'll pop that car off and get it sent to you. It is absolutely nuts. That's got a sink on. S2000 highlights how beautiful it is in this yellow. It goes, here it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's the warning. Here is the mighty garage. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. This guy's always out there. Oh, okay. um, yeah, this will be the rough idea with yeah. my one. The lower tips. Mayfair. Classic colour. I love yeah. that. I love that. Thank you. It's funny, like, try and catch yourself. Mark III's are very underrated. They were all, you could pick them up for peanuts. Yeah. But great parts. I think I'm looking at them all the time, just because you can see them all the time. Yeah. But they're so, they've become so sore of Right. Man, yeah, really good. Well, that's been properly stripped out in there. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> the, the battery. Does it need jumping constantly, do you think? Hey. Does it need jumping constantly? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I like the uh, bumper sticker on this one. Helen. <laughs> 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 Where was we on this side, wasn't we? Oh, police there. Bobbies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Metro. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, I still want one. Five door beast. Epic. <laughs> More practical than yours. <laughs> oh yeah, it's bigger. That's the thing. It's like five door. Look, it's bigger. It's still got more boots than that. I can actually go easily shopping in there. <laughs> 
Again, just to think that these were like throwaway cars. Literally, and no one yeah, wanted them. No one wanted them. I had someone. There was a low mileage one near where I used to live, and they literally had that 300 quid one yeah, at some point. It had like 10, 15,000 yeah, miles you on pick it. Pick them up peanuts, and they got like no mileage on yeah. them whatsoever. You couldn't drive it very fast. Oh, what's it? The the GTA. Oh, original windscreen as well. Oh, yeah, it is as well. Yeah. <laughs> String in. And that'll be the original tax disc, I should imagine. It's 91. Yeah, I'm still very tempted to get a Metro. Yeah. Just because it would annoy Rich. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the thing, I, I've just always loved quirky cars. Yeah. Like, a lot of people, don't get me wrong, I appreciate all cars and everyone has style so say say for instance like that old Audi Quattro we saw yeah so I look at it I'm like oh wow that's an absolute masterpiece thing of beauty then I look at a new Audi RS6 for instance I'm like it's a nice car but it's the only thing that does it for me is the power. I yeah. think they're very bland looking. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. No, they're really. You know, uh, that's the thing. Yeah, the 350. Oh, great family okay. car. But, yeah, I don't know. Just black. Oh, polo bread man. Yes. That is cool. <laughs> I keep on looking at these as well. You used to get these for like three, four hundred quid. They're like throwaway cars as well, and now they're like a couple of grand. Yeah. Oh, look at the peace lots! Look at them seats though. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Brick van car. That's just cool. They're just, they're just simple. Cool. Always had a soft spot for like this. That's just for me, they're like, they're just cool cars. Do you have one of those from Miami to Orlando? But not a five litre, unfortunately. No, that'd be a very expensive gen. <laughs> well, cheaper in America. Oh, well, round where we were, was fuel wasn't that much cheaper. Oh. oh, this is what I keep saying for Simon to get. Get a Reliance Scimitar. Yeah. You have a great fun. They're really practical. They're fiberglass. They don't rust. Yeah. <laughs> I've done a screen on them. They do before. sweat though. <laughs> yeah. So I've done a screen on one. It's horrible to do. Yeah, I guess these flex when you take the screen out. Yeah, they're horrible to do. Yeah. But oh, they're cool. Oh, well. It's a GTE as well. It's a nice one. The thing I've always loved is this the rear end on them. Yeah. They just look. They just look cool. And the engine. And the engine. Yeah. It is a really nice one. I mean, yeah. They said they don't rust. Yeah. Seven, what are they? Seventeen. There's an SRT we saw. That's a Hellcat then. Yeah. Oh, look at the rush plate. It's a Hellcat. <laughs> I like the intake. I was about to say, literally, by the point at the intake. I reckon that's the one we heard leaving McDonald's. I think it is. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to get distracted now. <laughs> That's alright, nice, no, gorgeous. <laughs> but, I'm sorry. Oh. Oh. What are you saying? Triumph Herald. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's the same colour as mine, but I had the uh, white strap going down the sides. Oh, I miss my Herald. Yeah, they are cool. But also, mine was an automatic and had a big engine. <laughs> I so miss my Herald. Very good. Also, if you don't shut the passenger, didn't shut the passenger door hard enough, it'd swing open on a roundabout. Really? Yeah. And then you well, throw the car back, and it would slam again. Well, my <laughs> mum found that out as well. Oh. She, to, she restored her own. Yeah. And she found that. <laughs> she also. Found it's just a, it must just be a quirk of the car. <laughs> she also found if she go round, went round a corner too much, her entire side um, span would drop off and slide away. <laughs> Oh, I miss mine though. So I miss mine. Yeah. Is it Vitesse? Everyone who's had one of these always oh, is selling it. It's a newer one. It's the Vitesse yeah. front end. I had the old one, the old bubble one. Oh, 1200. Yeah, but it had a 1500 automatic in it. Oh, nice. It was flipping quick. It was Spitfire engine, twin carb. It's beautiful. <laughs> 
Love it. We keep going back, like coming back. We keep adding more cars. <laughs> we haven't made it very far. We only parked it with that. <laughs> oh, you spotted a MX-5. Oh, Skyline. Oh no, see, oh, Skyline. Tip. Again, the interior. Look at that. <laughs> this was the first some the first car when I was a kid that my parents had was a Mark One. Oh right. They yeah. had a Mark One and it did, it had a bench on the top, there's no seatbelts. Oh right, yeah, yeah. So we were like I don't know, like three, four years old <laughs> riding the back of a goal. It's crazy now. Okay. There's no seatbelts whatsoever. Oh, I don't know. E type. Yeah. This is for me is that Mark personally three? the most beautiful car design. Oh yeah. I love, I love, I love. So, um, What's that? the MGB was... They released the version of this and they have like digital dish, uh, digital dash on them and it would actually talk to you. <laughs> so I remember I was a like kid. Knight Rider. Well, if you had a door open and a seatbelt, it would literally talk to you and say, close door or put your seatbelt on kind of thing. And I was a, I was probably like six, seven years old and my friend Adam, Adam Webb, his dad had it. Well, I didn't even know it, what the car was. <laughs> you just don't get cars like it anymore. So just name this video, um, <laughs> Jamie nerding out. <laughs> nerding out, yeah. I am a massive, massive nerd most times. Well, with some cars, especially Japanese cars. I don't know, it's just, yeah, that's the just thing is, shocked. I don't really get excited for new cars. It's very rare a car will come out now and it will get me excited by an old like Nissan or an old Toyota or something. You need to get one, Tom. <laughs> an old car. Oh, I know. I'm going to go. Uh, get my cleaning cloth. Look at that interior. Look how comfy it looks for your kid, Tom. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, it's like a one. sofa. This is probably this is this is one of the contenders. Do you want to see my favourite feature? Yeah. Lights. Rear tail lights. It's the same pattern. That's like the, the famous, like iconic Nissan Skyline thing. Is yeah. the lights. Everyone knows. See them lights. Let's find some more cars. It's got a lot going on underneath there. Oh yeah, look at those intakes. Dual air intake. Actually, it's one just for cooling. Uh, that's it's ITB's there. Yeah, one's just a, a through, and then the other one's actually for. But at least they've evened it out. I quite like that. Yeah. It's cool, isn't it? Okay. Very nice. I get the hungry already. <laughs> That's what happens when I have McDonald's. I'm like, oh yeah. And then they get more hungry. Yeah. I wonder what other cars are coming to the grass. Very good point, actually. But I think but they're reserving some space up here for the nice ones. Yeah. Yeah, because there's still all that bit there that's open. Yeah. Maybe they've got some convoys coming a bit later. Mm. Just wanted to save some space. <gasps> Look at this. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Tell me you don't want it. <laughs> Tell me you don't want it. Oh yeah. That's a bit of you, that is. That is such a bit of you. Yeah. <laughs> is that class of the K car? Is it small enough? Well, K cars are... Basically, K cars are normally around 600, 660cc turbos. Right. The reason why they introduced it was 
in Japan, it was to do with well, a lot of it was to do with tax and pollution. They're cheap to run. Um, another thing about like Japan is they just try it. That's why you, they exported a lot of cars. Well, yeah. So anything that went over three years, they would. They're just trying to get rid of them, basically. But K cars now get very sought after. Oh yeah, people are importing them. Yeah. Left, right, centre. It's like um. Oh, I don't know. You, you used to not see that many, but they've got, like well, you say, really, really popular. Oh, they're actually, they're not actually. No, they're Subarus, aren't they? Yeah. You get a lot of people, because they're the same as the... They're literally a GT86, yeah. 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 But, but they've got a Subaru engine a instead. Engine, yeah. yeah. Which I don't like. Because they're prone for head gaskets. Ah. But, I mean, the only thing I do actually like about them is the iconic noise they make. Yeah. You can tell it while I'm coming down the road, can't you? Yeah. Oh, that cabby. Notice how directional this mac the microphone is. With yeah. the headphones in. I've actually got a point at you and then I can, it's nice and clear. Oh, really? And then over here it's just like... <laughs> just right here, you're in the background. <laughs> that would annoy me so much. <laughs> Seals on the lights, I'm like, oh, yeah. new. Yeah. Cars just look yeah, cool. It's a You can fit it in, why not? There is though, like it's quite a fun spot. Yeah. Oh, it's racing spec. Lots of trouble using shit. That's the thing, you like it's one like one of the best engines naturally aspirated to come. That Honda when they originally released first the EK9 that had the best power to weight ratio of an actually aspirated engine what was it 100 brake horsepower per litre they got they achieved out of that which is insane but like, even to the standard state you, no one's done it like no. as far as I'm aware well, I think it was, who was it that lost? I can't remember my brain is foggy today it's overwhelmed by all the gorgeousness the problem I have when I come to car shows that is the best outfit I've seen today. That is epic. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah, when I come to a place like these, I just want to spend money. Yeah. Which isn't going to happen. <laughs> There's a lot of Terra 5s I've noticed, though. Yeah. I've seen about four or five since I've been here. <laughs> if they come but no GTIs as of yet. No. Uh, is that not a GTI? No. Has someone just painted it? Oh. Yeah, I said... <laughs> yeah, no. Someone just painted that bit red to make it look like a GTI? There's a diesel one for sale around here somewhere at the moment. And you can run the, the like you can run them on like anything, but like the engine just got oh that Aston Martin there. It's actually good. Do you know my least favourite thing though though? Yeah. Is the grill. Oh, I know, I kinda like the grill. I don't know. Because the front end's always been its thing, hasn't it? Yeah. But for me it doesn't look like it's in the right place. Uh, no, I kinda think it makes it look more, even more streamlined. Yeah. No. Because no, the old good. ones like it had almost like a flat front, but there's one right down there. Yeah. It had a flat front, and so it just felt like it just. It's weird because it, it's weird because it doesn't look like an Aston Martin. You've seen the one behind, yeah. <laughs> the smart car. Is smart car smart, time machine. The smart Delorean. That's literally, I think, that's what the car would have been nowadays if uh, the movie came out. Because it was that sort Do you of. Reckon? Yeah. The smart Delorean. Yeah. Look at it with the coffee machine in the back. <laughs> oh, so it actually is to make it look like. Oh. That's hilarious. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 like. I want to drive it. <laughs> 
Oh, that's probably just a standard smart car. <laughs> just yeah. some bits. Yeah. I've always been slower. I, think. I know, darling. Oh, they said oh, three. Oh, yes, yeah, the M1, it's the one we do. But I absolutely love it. Uh, yeah. 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 When I look at it from this angle, I just love it. I just love it. That bulge right there yeah. from the wide stance. Yeah, it's just cool. It's just different. But I think that's, as I say, that's always been my problem. I just like quirky cars. Yeah. Well, I know, that's, that's I like what makes Metro. a car a classic, I think. I'm going to say, is something. Yeah, it just something that stands out. It's like the PT Cruiser is, is actually becoming a classic. Yeah, well. even though it's like one that. They were hideous and they were awful to drive. Yeah. <laughs> It's the same as like the Subaru with the bug eyes. They're like everyone's least favourite. Yeah. But again, they're getting really popular. Yeah, yeah. Because they're cheaper ends. Yeah. Whereas everyone liked the Hawkeye for the aggressiveness. Yeah. But if you get I would be absolutely love. <laughs> because I, I don't know, I just always like little cars of like stupid power. Not that they're like out of the box, they're not great, but they're good. Yeah. There's a YouTube called um, Captain Sparkles, and he's got a Fit 500 Bath, but he's also got Ferrari. He's just bought an Aero no, not an Aero Atom. A uh, BAC mono, oh. custom BAC supercharged mono. Jeez. Yeah, beautiful thing. But yeah, he's got a Fiat 500 above because he absolutely loves the little car. And it's it, he says his little car that he can just doesn't matter if he gets a door ding. Yeah. So thank you for coming. Um, you're all absolutely nailing it. And I thought what's quite cool about this panel here is you all kind of go about things in very, very different ways. So starting from the end, I mean, you're a, a YouTuber, but also a massive streamer, and that has taken you to Grand Turtle. Um, you know, do world, real world racing. You've been racing at the Nurburgring. Really. Matt, you're repairing all these supercars, but you've also got these prize draws, which go absolutely nuts. And then Alex, you've started your channel off for car throttle, and you're going to the Nurburgring, ring, it seems, every week. Every other week, yeah. <laughs> and then you've also started your own events. Shedfest was actually, I mean, I, I kind of went to that to then see how this was going to go, and it was just a fantastic event. So I just want to chat to you guys about, yeah, how do you go about your craft and how you see things going? So Jimmy, starting with you. How is the balance between YouTube, streaming, your real world racing, where are things right now? Mate, it's awful. Like, there's so much to do. You never have any free time. But um, 
for those who don't know, I basically started off streaming and uh, making videos about sim racing, so fake cars, uh, because uh, I have no money and real cars are really expensive. And from that, uh, science has gone on, sort of moved into the real content, moved into, um, as you said, doing sort of real life events, being a commentator and presenter for Grand Trismo, and then um, racing in real life at the North Cypher. But the balance is really difficult because you're always on the road, you've always got a laptop, you're always editing. And uh, I think people think, oh, these are like really nice, cool holidays. They never are. <laughs> You're always doing something. And, and it's a hell of a pivot because you will have brought up your initial audience through the kind of sim racing side of things and then suddenly you're showing this real world stuff. So how has your audience taken to that, that shift? Uh, I think they find it quite interesting because I think a lot of people who, uh, who are sim racers and do sim racing are kind of frustrated racing drivers. They want to go do it in real life but can't do it. And I think, well, hopefully anyway, uh, I'm a pretty average example of a, of a sim racer. Uh, and I, I'm all right, I'm all right in a real car. So I think it shows that it does transfer. Those who are quick on simulators are actually quick in real life too. Cool. And then, Matt, I mean, your YouTube algorithm is like nothing I've ever come across. I look at your videos after they've been live for like two hours. The numbers are just insane. The wave you're surfing right now, and you've massively earned it. What is it like when you put a video live? Do you kind of are you checking it constantly, or do you just come back and know and think, "Oh look, a million people have just watched my Ferrari build." Yeah, it's it's nuts to think about it like that. I mean, it's hard because when you're looking at YouTube, it's just all numbers. So like, you constantly like, okay, a million views, but you never happen really. Like, oh, let's do two, let's do three, let's do five. So you can't really concentrate on like a singular number. Um, but we just want to try and make the videos as best as possible, but to the, the audience now, I think we're trying to get is the people who aren't so into cars and then start watching. I mean, a lot of people, and uh, a few of the guys have mentioned it, said that like, their dads watch it and then at the end of the missus starts watching it because they get into it. And that's what I really like, that we're getting a different type of audience. But it's funny with Jimmy saying about his sim racing as well, that it's transferred from going from like, sim racing into real racing. And um, I hear a lot of like uh, e sport races and stuff like that, when you get into like doing the real world stuff. I've just bought a sim and I'm like, I really want to get on to doing like, the game and stuff as well. So, like, it, it, it's it's really hard really like, to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, Alex, you obviously made that massive move to move away from Car Total, and it's clearly hugely paying off for you. I mean, the, the sort of empire you're building, it starts off for yourself, but what I think is so great about your channel is you've created this network around you as well. It was Taylor and Rory, but then on your latest video, I mean, there was, what, five or six of you? Uh, I haven't seen more comments about a channel being more like the old Top Gear than your channel, so that, that must be a pretty cool place to be right now. Yeah, it really is. Um, yeah, like you touched upon when I left Car Throttle last year, my plan was to kind of be freelance for Car Throttle, uh, also freelance for Auto Trader, and then the Auto X channel would just be a kind of side hustle. If I get to 50,000 subs by the end of the year, happy days. But yeah, as, as you know, I'm sure many other people knew after week one, I think there was 200,000. After week two, there was like 250,000. And then I was like, oh shit, this is actually going to be a full-time job now. And it's just kind of like just spiraled. But like you said, people, um, viewers liken us now to the old days of Top Gear, which for me is like the highest praise possible. We buy cheap cars, we go on adventures, like you've done an adventure recently as well. And you know the comments and the love that you get for stuff like that is, is just unreal. So we try and do that as much as possible. But when you've got, you know, four or five people on camera and you've got two people who are filming and editing, it's just, it's a massive, massive like task to make it look good as well. It, it's going to be a yeah. five-minute skirmish followed yeah. by a 20-minute skirmish. Broadly speaking, yeah. Um, no bumping is allowed, and you can help in the audience. I don't know how, but maybe point out to us by yelling if you see bumping. You may see bumping. Large. Number four, Chris P. All his own in clear air. Remember, they're trying to set fastest times right now for qualifying. That's what matters. We will be given their time to set their ears. I'm ready for 20. Number 12, Matt's dad. I reckon he's got some serious speed in him. Middlebank's coming up here, still behind Ben. Number 11, oh. all over him. Going for an overtake. Changing his mind, Ben holding him high. They're getting ready. She sent them off, they are off. Very good start from Matt, pal of Matt. 
Uh, but already Matt Palomar, I think he's going to... Yes, he's taking me to the first turn. Into the first turn. So Matt Palomar yes. is in the lead. Followed by Matt, followed by many other people. Ben Collins, uh, still midfield. I like it when the racing drivers in midfield, though. It's more fun. Who's going to be the first person to just not use the brakes and pile into something? I think 11 is going to the back of six. Here it comes. They're going to use them as a brake. Ooh, fighting all the way into a round that. Surprising. Who's he fighting? I think that briefly went hand-to-hand -hand between them. It, it could be helmets on. Wait a minute. Look at the front. Oh! 